Ah, I like the yellow way better. Good morning. Why am I dressed like this? Because I'm about to get on a plane and fly to Texas. But you don't care about that. What you do care about is this. So we're going to revisit the clearance question again. So I showed you in the last video that my hand fit between the valve cover and the hood. And it still wasn't good enough for some of you. So we're going to go out and show you what the clearance is on a bone stock Cherokee. Here we have an unmodified bone stock Cherokee. That's an alternative to modeling clay. I, I don't know how to, man, I don't know how to uh, approach this subject without sounding aggressive. When I drop knowledge, I always sound like condescending and passive aggressive and angry. I'm really not. I'm just trying to educate why I'm doing what I'm doing. So I ran this Cherokee for years and years. I've tried every cooling gimmick that I thought would help me. I ran the triple electric fans with the big thick double core radiator, the Mishimoto, the flex light. I have spent thousands and thousands of dollars trying to keep this cool. And when I mean cool, I mean, I want to be able to drive in 115 degree weather, pulling a trailer with the air conditioning on full blast. So I tried the flow cooler water cool pump. This is an excellent water pump at low speeds, trail speeds, daily driven. But when you run it at 5,000 RPM, it starts eroding the tips of these blades. This water pump right here has a couple of weeks on it and the blades are already coming apart. If I left this in here for six months, um, these blades would be gone. So I don't know what exactly is, I mean, it's cavitation that's causing it, but I can't run a flow cooler because I spend too much time above 5,000 RPM. Um, the stock water pump I found best for what I do. This is a high quality spall fan. This is one of the best fans, electric fans you can get. Just by looking at these two fans, you should be able to tell that this one will definitely move more air. And to put it in perspective, this fan is rated for just over 9,000 CFM. This fan is rated at 1,300 or something like that. But why don't you run two? You run two of them, I'm still under three, around 3,000 CFM. This one at 5,200 RPM runs 9,100 CFM or something like that. Doesn't even matter the real numbers. What matters is this fan moves more than twice the air this fan moves. So these are great for low speed because these, you can run these on high when you're like parked or running really slow. And this one is gonna be moving less air because the engine's idling. But once you get on that throttle, this fan leaves this in the dust. What about the shroud? Yeah, oh. we're building a shroud. They don't make one for this kit. We're gonna have to build our own. But I did say we're, gonna, we're using the same fan, the same fan clutch, the same radiator, and the same fan shroud as on the Morver. So rest assured, we're gonna do it. But guess what? We're probably not gonna put it on for the secret mission. All right, now that we got all that out of the way, I'll tell you what's going on. We've got an important time sensitive mission in the Sierra Nevadas that we have all cleared our schedules for for a week, September 13th. I have got to get this running before then because this is the vehicle we have to take. The banana is the only thing that's gonna work for this. The Morver is too big. We're kind of in a crunch because I'm leaving to go to Texas for a couple of days for the boring business side of YouTube. And then I'm coming back and less than a week later, I'm actually gonna go on vacation for a week and a half. But the problem is, is this has to be running before we leave and I'm not gonna be here to make sure it happens for most of the time between, between now and the time we have to leave. So this morning I went over with Rudy and Trevor everything we need to do. What's the weather today? Gonna yeah, get hot all week up to 104 by Friday. Uh, no wind, no smoke, that's good. Trevor and Rudy got their work cut out for them while I'm gone. I think they can do it. Yeah. All right, so we had to send Rudy and Trevor off on a recovery. I'm leaving for the airport in an hour, and Ed has a muffler that came apart. We're taking this few minutes to get him up in the air and see what it's gonna take to get his exhaust system fixed. Oh yeah, it is smoking that shock. <laughs> yeah, let's get that fixed. Looks like you're, ow, that's my head. Oh man, how many times I gotta do that in my life? 
Anyway, like I was saying, it looks like the tailpipe's in good shape. So we just need to change the part with the muffler. So um, that's not the right muffler. I'm gonna go out and find one. That's a 44. And this is the one we're looking for. It's a Flowmaster 50 series Delta Flow. It'll be a nice mellow muffler for edge ride. Let's have a look at that. Let's see how this muffler is doing. I'd say kind of had it. In. I think it's had it. Yep. This muffler is in place. That's about where we want it. it. Needs to go up just a little bit. And then I've got to take a plate that welds to this hanger and welds to the muffler. So I am running out of time. I'm going to have to have Rudy finish this. There is no two ways around it. I got to catch. I got to catch my plane. Once again, the claw framing hammer is called into action. And once again, it reigns supreme in the world of fabrication. All right. That's the answer to that. That'll be the, that'll be the new muffler mount. And then he can figure that out. I'll be back Wednesday afternoon. I might see you Wednesday, but if not, I'll see you Thursday. All right. You'll see me in the video because I'm filming. All right, well, I don't know where my dad left off, or I know where he left off, but I don't know how much he told you. So this is for Ed's truck, the exhaust system. We got the new exhaust hanger welded in, the new exhaust, and it routed all the way up. So, yep, looks good. Sound a lot better? A lot better. Check that front weld. She done that and it messed it all up, and I think it's leaking. Front weld? Oh. It looks terrible. It does. Did you feel me as good welding back there? Yeah, I'll get it at the end. Got that? Okay. It's another day, and it's just me and Trevor in the shop. That's Trevor. We got a list of things to do before my dad gets back from Texas. First thing on the list is cut the studs. What are the studs? The studs of this pulley right here. Because they are too long. They come really close to the mechanical fan that we have on the front. So we gotta fix that. Cut the studs, check. Weld exhaust. Okay, so there's a good percentage of the exhaust that's put together underneath. It's just tacked together though. So at this exact moment, I'm going to be pulling the exhaust that we have built out and I'm going to finish welding it up because right now it's just all tacked together and it would sound terrible if it stayed that way. So we're going to fix that. garden and now I I don't have a good metaphor I got it welded up and now we just have to put it back in and finish the rest of the exhaust fits like a glove We've got it bolted back in and welded up. Next is, I want to do the crank sensor and wiring. We should have done that while the exhaust was out. We're fixing 
Trevor's car. We already fixed it. Now he wants it unfixed. Yeah. Oh. You can oh, still dude. see the glitter. We need to do that to your whole That's car. Amazing. Oh wait. <laughs> the glitter state. Oh, it's just glitter dust. <laughs> You're losing horsepower. Matt right thought here. that that would be hard to take off. Wow, that glit the glitter was a bad choice. <laughs> so I had to take this off because uh, Legal people reason. around these parts don't take kindly to cars like this. So I was getting cut off, coal rolled in my face, <laughs> birds flipped at me. So I figured for my safety, I better just remove it. Hmm. A little tricky. How many years were you a cat? <laughs> Too many. <laughs> the glitter was a mistake. <laughs> Get another bite. <laughs> it's the car wash. Right. So where are we going, Trevor? We're going to Tag and Go to get my car washed. You excited, Trevor? Yeah, we're giving it the works. <laughs> Now if you see a uh, red Jetta, it's not mine. It's the other guy with the red Jetta. <laughs> so next we'll be putting in the rear drive shaft and this came from Adam's drive shaft, but we accidentally told them the wrong U-joint. So we had to get a new one to adapt from one size to another. Rudy's getting ahead of us here. Oh, force it. I'm not forcing nothing. Just working in silence, all alone by myself. Good stuff. Fill transfer case with ATF, with the proper fluids. Do we have AT proper fluids? Nope, we gotta go to Napa. And St. George? Don't you need to go to St. George? Yeah. Let's go, uh, let's kill let's, two birds. Yeah. I need some more loom. They close at 5. What time is it? 2.24. Ah, it's going to be close. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to go get rebuilt. Was it bad in the first place? Do you know? No, we just ruined it when we pulled it out with the attached to the motor. Oh. All right. If you'd like a t-shirt, go to mattsoffroadrecovery.com. Back to root. Back to Tim. If you'd like to buy something in person, come to the yard. We have everything, including Rudy and Trevor. Thanks, Tim. Now for the weather, Trevor. It's hot. <laughs> Thank you. See you guys. Take care. Look, they have one on the shelf already. So we just basically traded them out for it. What are we getting here, Trevor? We're getting some loom. I got my stuff. We got it. We got We're headed the back loom. to the shop. Yeah. Like oh, we gotta go get some places. AT. I mean, proper transfer yes. case fluid. Yes. Proper transfer case fluid. All right. Well, we're at Napa now. And we're gonna pick up some ATF for the um, transfer case and also a battery. Another plug that would fit this particular one. I can get one, but it wouldn't be here till tomorrow. Ooh. Wanna see how long I can hold this battery upside down before it starts leaking? <laughs> all that and that's all I can do. <laughs> Next thing on the list, fill the transfer case with ATF. To do that, I'm gonna steal this pump handle over here. No, it's empty actually. I'm just gonna fill this up. I get the feeling this only takes one port, not two. Maybe it takes two. Be surprised. Yep, it's full. What was your first clue? And then you just give it like the... When you hear the transfer case crack, you know you gotta harden up. Someday, the list will be so far down the list I don't have to stand on the table to mark it off anymore. 
What's next? Crank sensor and wiring. And wiring? It says and wiring. Batteries, front seat, PSC, rear bump stops. Let's see the bump stops. What time is it? I think I want to start that one in the morning. Let's do the lug nuts. Yeah, let's do the lug nuts. Next order of business, lug nuts. Let's see, how many things? One, two, three, four, five, six. I've got one, two, three, six, seven. Nine more things? Ten. Ten more things to do. That's it. It's a piece of cake, really. So we got a couple things done today. We got the studs cut, we welded up the exhaust, we got the drive line put in, we got ATF in the transfer case. What else? We picked up the battery, picked up some loom in St. George for Trevor and his wiring. Yeah, we've got the starter and we put new lug nuts on. We did a pretty good amount today, so we'll catch you tomorrow. Thanks for watching.